All right, guys, how you going? Mason Corby here from Down Under Dynamics, uh, coming at you with another tutorial slash debrief for a jump. Um, so this one, we're going to talk about uh, head down. Okay, so I'm doing a jump here with a guy called Andre. He's an instructor down at uh, Byron Bay Skydive. So we're going to do a head down jump, and it's not going to be exactly like a how-to video, but more of a debrief and just running through a couple of things that he's done well, a couple of reasons why certain habits and incidents have happened and how to improve and just, yeah, typical things that generally happen on head down and yeah, how to deal with it better and how to improve. So I hope you enjoy the uh, clip and, yeah, write any feedback or comments or questions in the uh, comment section below. Enjoy. Alright, cool. So, as we can see here, getting out before us is a AF student's belly. So, the big typical thing when we're getting out for a for a uh, free fly jump, or any jump itself, is exit order. So, free flyers generally go after flat flyers. Uh, the reason I say generally is because it's all about the jump run uh, and the drift. Flat flyers drift more than free flies because they have a slower fall rate, so they drift further, which they get pushed by the, the upper winds more uh, because they have a slower fall rate and the free flies have a faster fall rate. Now this can change depending on whether you're doing a downwind jump run, up uh, crosswind jump run, or anything like this. So for more information on that, I'll be doing another video, check that out, or ask your local instructors of the drop zone or experienced people to get you to run through reasons why or different ways and just different circumstances of when and how you get out. The other thing is, as soon as we go, let's crack on with it. As soon as we get to the door, check the spot. Yeah, have a look. Don't just trust where you are. Look down at the ground and see that you are actually where you're meant to be. Okay, so we're about third out here. So you can see the drop zone just down here, there's a runway. Okay, so I'm checking that the spot is good. I'm making sure the gap's good between the group that left before us, not just counting, but visually checking the group, okay? And then I know I'm good. The next thing you need to do is put your rigs to the center when you're climbing out. Don't scrape your rig on the door uh, or, or have the chance that you can scrape the rig on your door, so always rigs to the center. Naughty boy me, I don't do that on this one. Good old Andre, he does. So, shock in there, okay? So, that's how you do it, just like Andre did there, getting out. Now, we're gonna stack up. I'm just we're gonna, just gonna watch the video now. I'll give a couple of little briefs, talks through it, and then we're gonna rewind and um, go through it in detail. Cool? So, getting out, linked exit, just on the arms, flying the chest. Okay, so he has done a couple of head down jumps before, done, done a couple with him. So, you can see there's a bit of movement there with the arms and the legs, so it's not necessarily still. It's kind of constantly trying to move and adjust, and this is normal. Wobbles out there a bit, corks slightly, but comes back on level. Does the transition on level, okay? Well, wobbles doesn't quite nail the transition. We'll go over the reasons why that happens. Same, back on level, sit fires real good, and he nails this one a bit more. Okay, still you can see a bit of movement in the arms there. The shoulders hunched. It goes quite well. Just to wobble the end, break off. Okay, backtracking away. Not the cleanest backtrack, but good backtracking, getting that habit, okay? The more you do it, the better you're gonna get. As I said, we're not looking for perfection. This jump's not about perfection. We're gonna talk about the, the general things that we can help improve. Make his position improve. Let's up that light a little bit. Okay, so now if we just talk about the general body, now what we're looking for when we head down is we need a, a quite neutral position, okay? So we're not looking for, we're, we're looking for symmet symmetricity, be symmetrical with the body, okay? So if I back up a little bit, we want our arms about here, okay? We don't want them in, we don't want them up, we don't want them 90 degrees, okay? We want them a little bit faster. So we're in a range of flying, say, 75% speed. That way we can go slower, that way we can go faster. Okay, when we're getting off the door, we're not trying to lean and pull it back. Our torso is heavier than our legs, or well, for most people. So naturally, the torso is going to fall uh, close to the earth than the legs are. So we're going to naturally go head down. If you try to force it, it's going to cause inertia and waves of motions to go through, and you're going to start being a bit wobbly. Whereas you get off and just try to, try to hold still, okay, it's going to naturally go vertical. Okay, so you'll see here what he does, he slightly kind of pulls, pulls back, only slightly in the arms drop real quick and then they come out and then they drop and they come out, so he's trying to stabilize. 
pulls it off, just wants to be a little bit more subtle. Okay, so let's have a look. So you can see here with the arms, they kind of want to stay in this angle compared to the torso. You can see this other one's not necessarily there. Okay, so that's what we're looking for. So try to notice what happens with his arm in this next stage. See how it kind of comes in like this? And then back out again, and then in, and that's what's causing that little wobble and instability off the door. Okay, now his arms drops again. So there's a lot of changes there with the body. Okay, you want to try and keep that to a minimum. All right, ideally what we want is the arms are going to want to be out here a little bit more. Okay, you can see he's in a bit of a shelf position now with the legs both back like that rather than a daffy position. Okay, if I draw a head down position here like this, it's the torso straight down. Now we're going to want the legs, the back leg, going to be something like this. Okay, now the front leg, something like this. So you can see that gap between both legs, it's pretty, pretty even. We don't want something that's going to happen with, we that's a bit of a shock and, shock and torso, like this. Okay, this is what can happen a lot of times and with the knee coming down like that, so you can see that's insymmetrical, or if it's up too much like this. Okay, so what's happening, which you should, should, if you can watch on other videos, the turbulence going through these, the wind's going to hit here and it's got nowhere to go. Whereas you can see the wind hitting the leg, it's got somewhere that's going to spill off and it's going to come down this way. Whereas here it's kind of stopping and like getting a bit of a dig in here. It's going to cause instability and turbulence and all sorts of things, but the air doesn't have somewhere flowy to go. Same with this back leg. Okay, this back leg, if anything, it's going to be wrong compared to this picture. If you stand up now and try to put your back leg and touch your, touch your head behind with your leg, your whole body is going to go from straight to arched. Okay, it's going to cause you to cork out, which you'll see happens in a second with Andre. So you'll see the, the left leg as we look at it, this one here. In a second, he's going to start digging in, trying to look for stability. Okay, he's trying to look for pressure, familiarity, and that's going to cork him out. And the reason is because we're descendants from apes, so we're used to moving around in the physical world with the palms of our hand and on the soles of our feet, and that's how we move, we motorize. Same with when we're swimming, we use these as paddles and we kick our feet to get our movement. The air is different. If you do that, it's not going to work. It's too thin, okay? You need something a bit thicker. So to move in the air, we need to present a certain body body part, present it aerodynamically so it's going to spill us and make us move off. We can't actually push off the air because there's nothing to push off. It's thin. So by presenting a surface area and a body, it's going to push us, okay? So you want, when we're head down, we want the air to hit us evenly on the belly and evenly on the back. We don't want to be like this, hunched, neutral, forwards, backwards, okay, up, down. You don't want to hunch the shoulders, the shoulders as well, aerodynamic or like a missile, we fall straight down, okay, same with the legs, same with everything. So let's continue on, enough of me gobbing off. Cool, so he puts the legs out, you can see that one that I was drawing before, hey, so that leg is right back, and this other front one, He's right down. Naturally, his arms, his arms are in a pretty good position here, all right? If he, if he maintains them, but he's just digging too much with the legs. All right, and that's what starts corking him out, ready? Boom, there. Okay, so it's bending too much, it's just because we're searching for familiarity, yeah? Sometimes it's the foot just curving the shoe, just grabbing, and that's what we feel is the pressure. It corks out. Stands, goes into stand and comes back really well. Okay, two way, this isn't too much of a problem. You don't want to be doing this in a four way or a three way, even. As soon as you start wobbling, it's just going to cause danger. You don't know people diving back down, all sorts of things. So, if you're doing jumps like this and this is your skill level, you really want to stay as a two way until you're comfortable in not corking off your head. Call back on transitions. Now, he wobbles out of this transition. The reason why, if you look at the body position now, you can see the arms. One arm's up like this, and the other arm's out straight. As I said before, aerodynamics, this is hitting here, causing turbulence, okay? And this one here too, it's got nowhere for the air to flow off cleanly. 
we want to have that air flowing cleanly off. So ideally we want the arms to be down this position. When we're doing transitions, it's quite normal for us to try and catch ourselves and then let go of the arms. So if you do do this and you do find you're catching yourself, that's fine. Just try to release the tension as quick as possible. Don't straighten your arms and do the exact opposite. Do it and then release the tension. Okay, rather than trying to force your arm straight because that's just going to cause more inertia and it's going to cause you to probably cork out as well. Okay, same thing with that leg. He's trying to catch himself with that leg that's bent right back as well. So it's arching his body, trying to do that. There you go. Okay, so that's what's causing him to cork out now. A lot of this can be the mind too. When you transition, fuck, I'm just corked out. Shit, shit, shit. Breathe, come back on level, transition around. Cool, this is much better. Transitions, cartwheel, back flip, whatever. Usually I like in the sky, keep eye contact. It's not the same as tunnel where you can turn and go because you've just lost eye contact. You've lost your reference point. Cartwheel and transition worked perfect. He's done very minimal tunnel. I don't think he's, he's been on the net head down, so it's not gonna really help too much in the sky yet. You can learn head down in the sky. I learned all in the sky first, then took it to the tunnel. Boom, catch, and then he starts releasing that other hand. You can see now, this hand here, it's down, you can see compared to the horizon, it's not up on the horizon level, it's actually down, so the wind's able to spill off there. The other hand's a little bit up still, but his legs are good. He's not digging too much with the legs anymore. Okay, now he drops his hand. So this is where you can see he's on an extreme slow fall, probably max slow fall with his legs, and his arms are quite neutral. So if anything for, for Andre here, what I'd be doing, less with the legs, a little bit more with the arms. Okay, if he does too much with the arms, it's just finding that balance. This is very normal when you're starting off. So don't beat yourselves up about it. Just go out, find that balance, try to fly at a 75%. You don't need to be fast, don't need to be slow. And just test, test your body. Pizzas are fine, yeah. A lot of people bash you about pizzas, but pizzas do work. It's how a lot of people flew back in the day. Now we can see as well, if we go back here slightly, so the position with the legs are quite good. Probably started digging in a little bit too much with this this back leg, and you can see this front leg, what happens, this whole thing here acts as a hinge from this point, and he starts losing lift. So because he transfers that front leg back, it's what starts making him cork out, okay? You can control this with the legs, you can control forward and backwards with the head as well. Yeah, so we see that leg here start coming out, coming back under starting to search heaps with that rear leg again, tumbling out, and backtracking off. Cool, so as I said, this wasn't a how-to video or anything like that, it's more just about these are the general tips you can think about. So the things you wanna take away from this, number one, try to not move as much. Be a lot more still, okay? Really think about the subtle thoughts, where's the wind hitting on my belly, on the back, rather than trying to change what you're doing, become aware of what you're already doing, okay? Are my legs really wide? Are they together? Are my arms up? Are they down here? So really questioning what your body's doing. Once you're doing it, just move in between the ranges slower. For transitions, transition before you transition, breathe, calm the mind, transition, think fast, okay? Don't try to catch yourself with as much drag. Think quick, Breathe and then slowly put it out. Any quick reactions are gonna have quick results that happen afterwards, okay? <sighs> Pretty much it, I guess. So think about your symmetrical body. If you really need to, do what I've done. Pause it, draw it on the screen, draw the shape that your body makes, draws the horizon behind you and think, hmm, if that shape aerodynamically is compared to the horizon like that, where am I gonna go? What's it gonna produce? So just asking yourself these questions really helps, okay? Yeah, hope you like the video guys. If you have any questions, comments, or anything like this, stick them below. I've got a tunnel one I'm making soon on layouts I'll be doing. Uh, also an angle one coming up as well. So yeah, check it out, have a look at the other videos. Uh, if you have any requests on videos, send us a, a, a message. Uh, if you want coaching on your own, I also do debrief as well. So check out doneunderdynamics.com, bit of a tongue twister. And if you want to come for a jump, Come down to Byron, yeah, come to Sydney Tunnel, come for a fly. So, enjoy guys. Thanks for watching, and uh, see you on the next one. Cheers.